morning. Welcome to the beloved community known as the Unitarian Universalist Church of Amherst. I'm Scott Harrigan, a member of the worship design team, and in today's service is going to be multi-generational, meaning that the children will and the youth will remain in the chapel and participate in the service. Multi-gens tend to be broken up a bit more and are story-based. Today we celebrate the emerging spring with the pagan holiday Beltane, and then I should warn you, you might have fun, so be careful. Uh, for those who gathered in the chapel, I invite you to put your phones on airplane mode or worship mode so that you and all may be fully present and free from distraction, as well as freeing up our bandwidth in the chapel so our live streaming friends are able to enjoy the service without disruption. And now, let us do what we do best in this congregation and welcome one another Newcomers and long timers, let the welcoming begin. One of the best things being up here is I get to feel that whoosh of energy and watching you scatter like mice when you hear the, <laughs> the, the clang. You're like, back to our seats. It's fantastic. Welcome to this place and this hour of worship, worth-ship, where we lift up that which is of ultimate importance to us. I'm Reverend Michelle Buhite, and I'm the minister of this congregation. My pronouns, which I offer to create a truly inclusive and brave space for all to live into the fullness of their identities, are she and her. Unitarian Universalism is a religion rooted in pluralism. Ours is a principled faith, calling each of us to our best selves and to make a positive difference in the world. So you can find the current iteration of our principles and sources um, in the front of the gray hymnal just before the first song. Don't look now, but you know, during the service, if I am going on and on, feel free. Um, <laughs> go to page one and turn back one. Our opening words this morning are my favorite kind, a song. And I'm going to teach you some movements to the song. <laughs> Full aerobics here, that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to come down where you can see me. So for many of you who are long timers, this song is uh, pretty familiar. So you will be the leaders in the singing department. But I want us to have a way to be fully embodied. And so the movements, which you may choose to do or not, but I'll be keeping a list, um, <laughs> are 
gathered here, and then we create the, the chalice flame in the mystery of the hour. Okay, so just try that. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, and then every time we do gathered here, it's the same motion. Gathered here in one strong body. So it's, it's those clasped hands, one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit, draw near. See how good you are? So they go with the words. So it's, it's a mnemonic device, both directions. It'll help you remember how to do the movements, and the movements will help you remember how to do the words. We're going to sing this through three times with varying success with our motions. Okay? <laughs> Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near. Gathered like a prayer. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near. You're so good. It is our custom when we gather to light a flaming chalice. The chalice is a cup or vessel that symbolizes the gathered community. The flame represents the spark that each one of us brings to represent the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of our commitment to bring more compassion and justice to this world. Please join me in speaking our chalice lighting words. We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. Each week as we light the chalice to symbolize the gathering community, we also acknowledge that our church is built on holy ground, ground that was first cultivated and occupied by the Haudenosaunee and those known as the neutrals. We honor them as the original keepers of the land. We offer this libation as our giveaway, a symbol of our respect for and deep connection with the land. May we be good stewards of the land and courageously cultivate community with all living things. Together we weave a tapestry of reverence and belonging. Our song of intention this week is found in the Teal Hymnal Number 1,000, morning has come. The words will also be projected up front. Although we have heard this song fairly frequently, we haven't sung it much. Gregory and the music team will offer the first verse, and then you'll be invited to rise and sing. and body or spirit and join us as we sing verses two and three.
are a beloved community, which is a gathering of people who have chosen to journey together, to encourage one another, and to be a part of something important and life-changing. Because we aspire to be such a people, we make bold promises about how we will be with one another. Whether today is your first time or you've made UU Amherst your longtime home, you are invited to share in our sacred promise. Together we promise to gather in compassionate community to celebrate diversity of thought and unity of spirit and to seek wholeness for ourselves, our children, and our world. I just want to appreciate the folks on the left side of the chapel. You've had to rearrange your seating because I had to do a little bit of rearrangement to make room for our maypole. And I appreciate your flexibility in leaving your assigned seating and <laughs> venturing into new ground. So thank you for that. This week, I had the privilege of performing a memorial service for two beloved members of UU Amherst, Jack and Betty Howell. Jack died on March 23rd, and Betty followed on April 22nd, Earth Day. I learned a lot about the two of them as I shared time with their adult children. In addition to being awesome people and parents, I learned that Jack had been a competitive swimmer, which opened the door for him to study mechanical engineering at Cornell. It was there that he met Betty, a home economist who would go on to have her own local television show, sharing tips with families about all manner of household necessities, from gardening and cooking to septic system design. The phrase that came up over and over again when describing Betty was that she was an avid gardener. And actually, our grounds have been blessed by that passion for gardening. She began with vegetable gardens, and then when their children were grown, she turned her attention to flowers. Her garden became a certified natural habitat and an occasional stopping place on garden tours. I tell you this partly because I think it is important to lift up the lives of those who have gone before us, and partly because of Betty's love for flowers and Jack's love of Betty. I have a story to share, a story about flowers and about love. This story is entitled, The Goddess Blesses All Forms of Love, and it is adapted from Starhawk's book, uh, Circle Round, which is um, how to raise children in goddess traditions, in earth-centered traditions. So perhaps this is the first time you have experienced um, the goddess in uh, a house of worth-ship here in Amherst. Amherst. Welcome. <laughs> Anything can happen. Circle round, and I will tell you a story about how the maypole came to be. Once upon a time, a long time ago, or maybe in a time not yet come, there came a springtime when no flowers bloomed. The plum trees and cherry trees showed no white or pink or red blossoms, no daffodils pushed up from the cold ground, no buds formed on the roses, no lilacs perf perfumed the air, and no poppies opened their bright petals to the wind. And the worst thing of all was that nobody seemed to notice, except for one young girl named Vivian. Where are the flowers? Vivian, Vivian asked everyone she met. And everyone looked at her strangely. Flowers? What flowers? Asked the woman who delivered their mail. I don't have time to worry about flowers. I've got a root to cover. Maybe she means flour, said the man who ran the corner shop. Maybe she wants to bake a cake. Hmm, I've heard of flowers, said the woman at the library. I know I've seen a reference to them somewhere. 
I've got a great computer game with flowers, said her brother. Who needs to dig in the dirt when you can grow your own virtual garden? Maybe she needs to go to bed early, said her mother. Perhaps she's coming down with something. Doesn't anyone miss the flowers, Vivian cried. She's confused, said her teacher. We must be kind to her. She's ill, said the doctor. We must cure her. She's loony, said the other boys and girls, and they made fun of her until Vivian got so mad she ran out of the schoolyard into the deep woods. She ran and ran until she couldn't run anymore. She flung herself down in a patch of grass and began to cry. Nobody loves me, she cried. Nobody cares about the flowers. Nobody cares about me. That's exactly how I feel, said a small voice by her ear. Vivian lifted her head and saw a tiny, scruffy, shabby little dandelion. Its petals were tattered, its stem was bent, and it looked like it might collapse at any moment. But it was the only flower she had seen all spring, and she was thrilled right down to her toes. Oh, dandelion, she said, I am so happy to see you. You are so beautiful. Not really, said the dandelion modestly, but it did perk up. Why aren't there any flowers this spring? Why doesn't anybody miss them? Vivian asked. Exactly, the dandelion said. Nobody misses the flowers, so why should we bloom? Some kind of love has gone out of the world, and so the earth spirits are sick and the flowers have disappeared. But with the right kind of love, you can call them back again. What kind of love, Vivian asked. But the dandelion only said, do you really think I'm beautiful? After all, I'm the most common of flowers. I think you're gorgeous, Vivian said. The dandelion sighed. Then I can be happy. I can die happy. It collapsed on the ground, and one by one its petals shriveled and faded. Oh, poor flower, Vivian mourned. You really were beautiful. But she sat up and she dried her tears. For now she knew if she could only find the right kind of love, she could bring the flowers back. Hmm. It's a strange notion the right kind of love that can bring flowers back? I think I need to ponder that for a while. Good morning. Oh, that's fun to say. Uh, my name is Jameson Crawford. I've been coming here for uh, about seven or eight weeks now. Um, and I'm a recovering United Methodist. Um, <laughs> So today's reading this morning, at least this reading, is uh, Creation is Messy. Creation is messy. It's inconvenience, and often it's uncooperative. Take a look at the cosmos. Go ahead, close your eyes and imagine the stars. Seriously, please, close your eyes, because I'm going to ask you to open them later. It's going to be awkward if you're still looking at me. And when you close your eyes and imagine the stars, forget the Franz Josef Hayden uh, spacious firmament bits. His images are far too tidy. See the real mess that the universe made of itself 14 billion years ago. All of creation is still trying to clean that up. It's called the Big Bang, not the Grand Coalescence, for a reason. Mistakes were made, probably, and incorporated into the whole anyway. And wonders never cease. Here we are still muddling along 14 billion years after the fact. Now open your eyes and look around you. See, I told you. You are surrounded by the most astounding and miraculous wonder of all. Each other. Community. Life ongoing. Caring about life ongoing. So it is. So it shall be. 
because we do care. I believe we come to church to connect, to find our center, to be reminded that we are part of something much larger than ourselves and that we are held in a love that defies our understanding. And so it is our privilege to bear witness to one another's joy and pain. We make room in the circle and in our hearts for all that we bring. You'll note the table here. It's round. This is where we acknowledge those joys, concerns, and sorrows that we carry with us, where we bear witness. Even as you bring your individual hopes and cares, you are part of a larger circle. So I invite you to come forward as you will, to gather round, accept the messiness of community, the accidental bumps and reaching across, and all, all of the things that are not tidy. I encourage you to just be okay with that and bring your whole selves and that which you carry up front to the table. Come forward as you will. Let's share a few breaths as we expand our circle to include those who may not be present, but whom we carry in our hearts. Those who are ill. Those who are in pain, either in body or in spirit. Those who are lonely. Those who have been wronged. We are part of a web of life that makes us one with all humanity, one with all the universe. We are grateful for the miracle of consciousness that we share, the consciousness that gives us the power to remember, to love, and to care. May it ever be so in our lives. Please remain seated as we sing together, Spirit of Life. life. 
Let's resume our story and find out what Vivian did next. Well, what she did next was to return home and ask her family to help her bring the flowers back. And although they raised their eyebrows and rolled their eyes, they followed Vivian into town. Vivian, where did you go? cried all the girls and boys. I went to find the flowers, and now I know that if we can find the right kind of love, we can bring them back. Although the townspeople thought Vivian was obsessed, distressed, and disturbed, they let her form them into a circle in the center of town. They held hands, and they closed their eyes. And nothing happened. The circle isn't big enough. We need more kinds of love. One girl said she would go get her two uncles who loved each other. One of the girl's older sisters said she would get her boyfriend. One of the boys said he would get his mothers who loved each other and loved him. The mail carrier noted that she loved her job. The grocer realized he loved his neighborhood. An old woman who lived in the woods loved trees. The librarian loved to read. A man carrying a spade loved to garden. And a very small boy said, I love my dog. And the circle grew larger and larger, but still not big enough. No circle of love can ever be big, be big enough to hold all forms of love. Vivian heard a voice say, Holding her hand was a beautiful woman, her hair crowned with all the flowers of spring, and her eyes deep as wells and dancing with light. Her face was old and young all at the same time. Who are you? Vivian asked. I am the goddess, the woman said, the queen of the May. You have called me back from the other world with your circle of love. Then we did find the right kind of love after all, Vivian cried joyfully. The May Queen smiled. There is no right kind of love. The goddess blesses all forms of love. Whenever you join together in a circle with love and trust, you call me. Well, then how do we bring the flowers back, Vivian asked. And the goddess instructed Vivian and the people of the town to create a maypole, a tree of life, and like the branches and leaves, to tie ribbons for all the different kinds of love, making the circle whole. And so the people built a maypole, and they danced the maypole dance all through the day. And as they danced, White and pink blossoms popped out on the plum trees and cherry trees, and daffodils pushed up from the ground, and buds formed on the roses. When the dance was over, the May Queen gathered all the children close to her. I must leave you now, she said, but the flowers will remain in all their different shapes and scents and colors to remind you to honor all forms of love. And ever after, when the spring came, the people danced the maypole with bright ribbons in honor of the flowers and all the colors of love. The end. Although if it's spring, it's really the beginning, but it's the end of this story for this moment. So we have a maypole. It's a very elegant maypole. I think you would agree. <laughs> Um, it is uh, very tall, 12 feet, um, but it, I only put six ribbons on it um, because I am comfortable with a certain level of chaos, and then 
my comfort level just goes blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, because we are going to attempt to weave the ribbon. So I'm going to need six volunteers who are willing to help. Uh, yeah, I was waiting. I was, what took you so long? Come on up. <laughs> Rennie, come on up. Yes, Sonia, Alan. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. I like the blue one. I, I have control needs in this chaos. Okay, so. Okay, so one, two, three, four. I'm still missing two. Come, come forth, come forth, come forth. Yes, there we go. Did that sound biblical? Come forth. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Do, do, you do, want. Just, wait a Just wait a minute. Put everything down. <laughs> you are a bunch of Unitarian Universalists. You will do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen? please, um, is that you are going to be going over and under, you know, well then, all right. No, no, no. Keep over and under, make it perfect, I don't care, I don't have any control needs, it's all right, I'll just be over here. I'll be over here making more mischief, because we have a song, don't do it yet, don't do it yet, we have a song. Okay, instruments, I love you. Come on, do it. Here we go. Round and round the earth is turning, turning, always into morning, and from morning into night. Round the earth is turning, turning, always into morning, and from morning into night. Round and round the earth is turning, 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 round till morning, and from morning into night. Round and round is turning, turning, always into morning, and from morning into night. Round and round. We did it, we did it. Okay, you can let those go, thank you. See, you didn't need my powerful instructions. <laughs> I turned out much better than I dared to hope. That is awesome. Pat, I know you're gonna find it really hard to believe we didn't rehearse that. <laughs> so I'm calling this portion of the reflection crashing the Beltane party because up to this point we have been pretty unabashedly pagan in our revel revelries and yet you may have noticed on the screen and up here Mary this particular Mary is a former participant in an outdoor nativity scene you know the blonde hair and ghostly white complexion with that upsetting light from inside. I fixed it. Yeah. Now she is brown skinned and dressed in sumptuous robes, more accur accurately reflecting her time and place. Very interesting, Michelle. But what is Mary doing here? Well, this Mary, not just this reformed nativity set Mary, but Mary, maybe Mother Mary, Mary the Magdalene. There are a lot of Marys. If you've ever read the Gospels, there are a whole festival of Marys. But this, at least according to tradition, is Mother Mary. So Mary, in, in the Catholic tradition, became a stand-in for the goddess, that one we just met a little bit ago with all, blesses all kinds of love, 
um, at least from the 8th century. So humanity's earliest religions were based in a mother figure, a creatrix, Salva Regina. Our service today has reflected a much older tradition. And parents, I'll leave it to you to explain the meaning of the maypole to your kids. Earth traditions are pretty earthy, so I'll leave that to you. I'm grateful to blogger Arthur George and his website, Mythology Matters, because he has done some of the heavy lifting that ties Mary, usually Mother Mary, who's also, by the way, known as the Queen of Heaven, along with a multitude of other names, and Queen of the May. May 1st is her feast day. Mary is connected to ancient Greek and Roman celebrations of spring, the Greek festival of Rhea, a titaness who is considered the mother of the Greek gods, and the Roman celebration of Floralia, the goddess of flowers in spring. I know you're going to just be throwing these words around later, you know, at lunch. Oh, yes, and then there was Floralia, um, so I'll take notes. With the first of May at the midpoint between the vernal equinox and the summer solstice, it is considered a magical cross point, a home for the Queen of Heaven, Queen of the May. And so we welcome Mary, mother, wife, goddess, to our Beltane party. As spring awakens the earth, as the goddess blesses all forms of love, as flowers emerge and the earth is fruitful once again, we emerge from our own slumber. We acknowledge and affirm the many ways that love is found and the way it transforms us. I was so inspired by our story today that I thought we might adapt one of our rituals, our, we our weekly creation of a morning altar, which if you've been coming here for a while, you might have wondered when you came in, hey, where's the table? I want to create the morning altar. Yes, Scott, this is your cue. <laughs> Scott's going to bring us out a table. I have over here um, some baskets with various flowers in them. Yes, Elise, yes, of course. <laughs> of course. And I only need five more. One, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to ask permission. You can just come forward. So I invite you to come forward as you will and create a moment of beauty. It doesn't have to be thought out, right? That's what, what community does. Okay, ready, get set, go. Boom. How about, how about some of you basket holders mingle? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. You can return the baskets over there. Thank you. So after the service, I invite you to wander up here and see what this beloved community has created in the moment without a whole bunch of directions or uh, even a whole lot of meaning. We make the meaning ourselves. I believe that we are connected. I believe that when we, ex when we experience that interdependence, we are able to access a creativity that is larger than we are and that expands our potential. I believe that when we come together in beloved community, when we exercise our greatest creative potential, we interact with the universe itself. And that's a lot of power. At our best, we can turn the world around. This song is in homage to Harry Belafonte, who passed from this life this week.
come from the fire, living in the fire. Go back to the fire, turn the world around. We come from the water, living in the water. Go back to the water, turn the world around. We come from the mountain, go back in the mountain. Go back to the mountain, turn the world around. Whoa! community or the fire of commitment these we carry in our hearts until we are together again as our service draws to an end our service to the world is ready to begin trustee of UU Amherst endowment Elaine Cusker will come up and tell you about some of the opportunities to connect and serve in the days to come good morning I'm Elaine Cusker I've been a member of this community for almost 30 years and currently serve as a trustee for the endowment and also uh, once a month as an usher. Uh, during our coffee hour today, you can purchase tickets for the upcoming Kentucky Derby party. In addition to simply being a good time, this event will raise funds for our congregation. See Reverend Michelle if attending the party presents a financial hardship. This is an adult event. Uh, next, the Network of Religious Communities 40th Annual Appreciation Dinner is coming up on June 1st. UU Amherst will be honoring our own Mickey Tannehill and Ron Palmieri. The dinner is at the M Hotel next to the Galleria Mall. It used to be called the Millennium. If you'd like to attend, please place a check for $60 made out to the Network of Religious Communities. Put a post-it on it with your name, your vegetarian or regular uh, dinner needs, and place it in the orange plastic folder in the canvas mailbox in the hallway outside the living room. You also can ask questions of Karen Thompson in the Emerson Room uh, at the Kentucky Derby table. There's been some confusion around use of the playground uh, on the church property, and the latest information is that the children may, they're welcome, to access the playground on Sunday mornings with parental supervision. Parents must accompany children to the playground. Um, before leaving, please rewind the swings around the poles and make sure the space is tidy for the daycare's next use. Um, see the church newsletter as well, the forward for information regarding upcoming services and events, 
Hard copies can be found in the lobby, and digital copies are available at our website, uuamherst.org. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't invite you to participate in supporting the mission and ministry of UU Amherst with your financial gifts. You'll find a green basket at the back of the chapel to receive your contributions, or you can give online by going to our website, uuamherst.org, and clicking on the giving link, or text your gift to the number on the screen. Throughout the month of April, we are sharing the offering with the Green Justice uh, team to raise funds for the upcoming Living Green Festival. Information for giving can be found in your order of service. Your gifts and participation are important because we pick fruit from trees we did not plant. We drink water from wells we did not dig, and this is as it should be, so long as we dig and we plant for those who come after us. Your generous giving supports the work of this congregation. Another way you can support those who come after us is through a gift to the endowment of this congregation. This uh, endowment was created 30 years ago, and through the gifts of the people who came before us, it has now reached a little over a million dollars. And this year, for the first time, we're able to contribute $45,000 to the operational expenses of the congregation. You too can participate in this, so the people who come after you will have this resource by gifts in honor of people, to memorialize someone who's passed away, or in a bequest in your will. If any of you have questions, please see me or any of the other trustees, Lorraine Marcus, uh, Dorothy Reed, uh, John Thompson, and Barry Kent. Thank you. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing our closing blessing. Travel light and travel easy till I see you once again. Travel light and travel easy and remember I'm your friend. May the This is the part where you look at one another and offer the blessing to each other. Here we go. Travel light and travel easy till I see you once again. Travel light and travel easy and remember. The blessing of truth be upon us, the power of love direct us and sustain us, and may the peace of this community preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>